Good afternoon, everyone. It's two o'clock and time to start today's briefing. On the panel today, we have Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett, Dr. Ben Weston, Associate Professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin and Director of Medical Services for the Office of Emergency Management, and Marlena Jackson, Interim Commissioner of the Milwaukee Health Department. County Executive Crowley, you're starting us off today. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. I first and foremost want to start by recognizing Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and more importantly, the lasting impact of his memory. When you think about these trying times, it, it can be very difficult to feel hope love and peace, which is the tenets of, of Dr. King's life, but through the leadership and the sacrifice, not only made by Dr. King, but also other American heroes, our nation has become more just and, and we have achieved real progress. For years, Milwaukee County has continued to be one of the unhealthiest counties in the state. And we know that's partially due to generations of disinvestments from communities of color and unequally distributed opportunity. And I'd like to say that as well as Dr. King knew, and I think we all know that Reversing the effects caused by generations of systemically racist policies and practices, it doesn't come easy. And so by continually putting our best foot forward and, and building bridges far and wide, we will achieve progress in creating a more righteous, loving, and healthy community. And Milwaukee County is moving forward in this tradition in our pursuit to achieve racial equity and become the healthiest county in Wisconsin. Just like the civil rights movement didn't spring up overnight, and when you think about the historic movements, uh, they didn't come easy. And to really achieve this goal of being the healthiest county by achieving racial equity is going to be a tall task for all of us. But I believe together as brothers and sisters, we can keep striving to live up to the legacy of Dr. King and keep moving toward health equity and achieve a better tomorrow. And we will achieve our goals. And one way that we've been doing that, uh, making progress on our goal is to become the healthiest county is by advising uh, on recommendations for the COVID-19 vaccine prioritization. Just yesterday, I, I co-signed a letter to the State Disaster Medical Advisory Committee Vaccine Subcommittee, uh, SDMAC Vaccine Subcommittee, uh, advising on recommendations for the 1B vaccine group, which is a, in a key part of this letter is that Milwaukee County supports the inclusion of both staff and residents of congregate living facilities to be included in the vaccination group 1B. This includes staff and residents at correctional institutions and shelters serving those who are experiencing homelessness as well as domestic violence. And these are individuals whose living conditions really put them at a greater risk of contracting the disease. And they're also more likely to have other health challenges and are more likely to be a person of color. And we know that the SDMAC and the state, they had some tough decisions to make ahead when we think about how we're going to uh, prioritize vaccination. And so I wanna say thank you to the subcommittee on vaccines for their work and for the opportunity to provide comment on the proposed recommendations as it relates to Group 1B. I also want to provide uh, an update on the progress that we're making uh, right here in Milwaukee County to vaccinate our, our, our county employees. And so currently the county is focusing on vaccinating employees as well as our service providers and EMS providers, uh, law enforcement agencies that are operating within Milwaukee County alongside the vaccine. And though we don't have a local health department here in Milwaukee Purview, so health departments and other vaccinators can allocate their resources to other unaffiliated groups, as well as high-risk individuals as they become eligible, eligible based on the state's phased rollout. So that said, at this time, the, the county site, like others in the region, these are not public vaccination sites. And so we support our local health departments and standing up community vaccination sites so we can create broader access particularly as supplies become available. And the county's current goal is to make sure that we get our employees and partners in both phases 1A and 1B vaccinated so we can continue to provide critical services that folks need. And so as of today, we've vaccinated about 474 Milwaukee County employees, and we'll be working to increase that number until all county employees are able and willing to receive the vaccine. And then lastly, uh, tomorrow's an exciting day in our country, a day that only comes every four years, which is inauguration day. And while there, have, there are several opportunities for, for virtual participation, I want to remind folks who's planning on gathering in person to please do so safely. We are planning on, ex if you are planning on exercising your First Amendment rights in any way, uh, you also need to make sure that you're being safe. So please remember the three W's, wear a mask, watch your distance and wash your hands. It's through those small but impactful actions that we'll continue to achieve being a healthier uh, community 
particularly in the future. And we'll all get this behind us. And really that's our major goal is to get this pandemic behind us. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over uh, to Mayor Baird and thank him for his leadership and partnership. Well, thank you very much, Mr. County Executive and good afternoon. Uh, yesterday, I shared my concerns that we need to do everything we can to be sure that all, all eligible members of our community receive vaccinations, um, specifically in the order in which they are designated. The reason that I made a point of that yesterday, and I'm gonna make the same point today, is when I looked at the vaccination data from the state last week, one thing jumped out at me immediately. We were lacking the diversity that was necessary and reflects Milwaukee's population. And we spent the last six or seven months talking about social determinants of health, about access to health care, about poverty, about people not getting the same services. And right now we're witnessing a disparity that I don't think is acceptable in terms of the people who are getting the vaccination. As I've shared before, we are currently in phase 1A, which includes our frontline healthcare workers. To date, a large number of individuals within our, health, our hospital systems, as well as city healthcare workers and emergency responders have been appropriately prioritized at this first stage. It made sense, it makes sense to have our frontline workers, the people who work in our hospital systems, the people who work for our health department and our fire department who are doing emergency medical services to be in that one category. But there's another group of individuals who are eligible and who are in that 1A category that I'm concerned about. And that is home healthcare workers uh, and healthcare workers that are not with a affiliated group. In other words, they don't work for a hospital system. They don't work for the city. They don't work for the county. They might be working for a small clinic or, or they might be going into people's homes. And due to the nature of the work, home healthcare workers enter multiple residents in a single day rather than working at one location, such as a hospital or clinic. They have interactions with older people, with sick people. They're at risk. People they serve are at risk. This work leaves both the healthcare professionals and their vulnerable patients at a high risk of contracting the virus. And a large number of these workers are people of color. And so I want to see them get this vaccination as well. I want to see all people in our community in the order in which has been designated receive the vaccination. So I am urging all unaffiliated healthcare agencies and individuals to utilize the vaccine connector tool at healthymke.com to be matched to a registered vaccinator in the area as quickly as possible. Please take advantage of this resource. It's a very, very important. Now shifting away from vaccinations, I'm pleased to share that the city hall and landmarks around Milwaukee will join in supporting the National Memorial to Lives Lost to COVID-19 as part of the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President, Harris, Vice President Harris. Today, tonight, cities across this nation will be illuminating buildings and ringing bells in a national moment of unity and remembrance to memorialize the American lives lost to COVID-19. At 4.30 p.m. here in Milwaukee, Milwaukee buildings like the Wisconsin Center District, Vicer Forum, and Discovery World and landmarks like the Home Bridge and Mitchell Park Domes will be illuminated in amber. The City Hall bell is also scheduled to ring four times beginning at 4.30 p.m. Each ring will represent the 100,000 lives lost to this deadly virus, 400,000 total so far. We also want to encourage residents to turn a light on in their home at this time to take part. I'm proud of this effort to support the countless Americans who are grieving the loss of family, friends, and neighbors to the COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, I wanna take a minute to talk about the COVID-19 testing numbers as of Monday, January 18th. Um, please note that the Northwest and Southside Health Centers were closed yesterday in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We did, however, at American Family Field have 1,062 people um, who got tested. Unfortunately, our testing numbers continue to remain lower than we would like to see them, and this is concerning. We've heard from many people who neglect to get tested because they don't feel their symptoms are severe enough. COVID-19 symptoms are different for everyone. Just because your symptoms feel more like a cold, that doesn't mean that you are COVID free. Just over the weekend, I was talking to my brother. He had a sore throat. I said, why don't you run over to the ballpark? It's not gonna take you long. He went over on Saturday. He said he was basically in and out in 10 minutes. 
Um, so the lines are not long right now. Um, and so this is a time for you, if you have symptoms or you're concerned to get tested. So take all your symptoms seriously and get tested. Yes, for some, for some symptoms can be minor, but there still is the risk that you may spread the virus to someone else and that their symptoms are severe or even life-threatening. Be cautious. When in doubt, take advantage of the free testing at our three community health centers and know your status. Finally, even if your symptoms are minor, identifying COVID-19 and quarantining yourself appropriately can protect your family and friends from potential spread. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Weston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon. Uh, first to our numbers, we have had 91,528 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in our community and 931 individuals who've died in Milwaukee County. Uh, and we will be updating our vaccine numbers for the county tomorrow on the dashboard. In our overall trends, we continue to see a steady level of positivity right now, uh, right at or just below the 10% mark. Uh, and that we certainly hope that with personal precautions as well as the vaccine rollout, we can continue to push that number further down even still. Uh, testing remains, as the mayor mentioned, fairly low. Uh, and there's plenty of capacity at our community sites. So anyone with symptoms, anyone with close contact uh, can get tested quickly and easily. As vaccine distribution and administration is ramping up in Wisconsin and in Milwaukee County, uh, we're seeing more and more healthcare providers, long-term care residents. Uh, this week, law enforcement personnel and starting next week, those 65 and older, uh, we're seeing these groups being vaccinated. And one of the questions that comes up uh, is what precautions still need to be followed after you're vaccinated? Is physical distancing and avoiding groups and masking still necessary? Well, quite simply, the answer is yes. Uh, and there's several reasons for this, but I'll, I'll focus on three that I think are most important. Uh, so first, we know that vaccines are not 100% effective in pre preventing illness uh, with the currently circulating strain of virus. Uh, and may possibly be somewhat less effective with the mutated strains uh, that are circulating as well. So while the effectiveness is indeed quite high, uh, and this makes the vaccine a huge benefit for those who are receiving it, there are still people who can get sick, uh, especially if they're not using the other layers of protection. So while the virus is still widespread in our community, uh, as it is now, the vaccine acts as one more critical layer of of protection in addition to distancing and masking. Uh, now that said, the vaccine is an extremely uh, substantial and important layer, uh, but still a layer nonetheless. Second, the vaccine takes time to reach full effect and for our body to build up the immunity it can provide. It's not until at least a week after that second dose of the vaccine that we see the full protection that it can provide. Uh, and this is why it's key to continue precautions in particular during this period of building immunity. Now, the third reason, and, and probably the most important reason, is that while we know that the vaccine prevents illness, as that is what the studies actually evaluated, it still is unclear whether the vaccine also prevents infection and transmission. So this discussion point gets a bit more complicated, but basically the vaccine teaches our body to make antibodies to fight the virus that causes COVID. And it appears that those antibodies work very well in fighting off the virus before it reaches and spreads in our lungs. And that's where it causes the more typical symptoms of COVID, fever, cough, shortness of breath. But what's less clear, what's less known is if these antibodies prevent the virus from entering and spreading in our nose and our mouth, where we would not have the symptoms of COVID necessarily, but we could still breathe out those respiratory droplets containing virus and potentially infect others. This is one critical area that needs more research and this research will happen in the coming months. Uh, but this is one of the most important reasons why it's so critical to continue to mask and continue to distance after getting the vaccine, not just to protect yourself, but to protect those around you as well. We must remember that COVID needs to make us very humble in our understanding of our infectious status. I still hear many people saying, don't worry, I don't have COVID. Uh, that's the tricky thing about COVID. We can have it and be contagious and be spreading it. Uh, and there's no signs that, that tell us that with asymptomatic infection. 
So once we understand more about the vaccine and its effects on transmission, and once we get a large enough portion of our population vaccinated, we'll certainly get to a point where we can start to back, get back to a more normal way of life. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not there yet. So for those who've been vaccinated, those who will soon get vaccinated, please, for now, continue to protect yourself uh, and in particular, protect those around you by wearing a mask and by physical distancing. Thank you very much. Stay safe. And I will hand it to Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Dr. Weston. So last week, the Milwaukee Health Department reached our goal of vaccinating over 1,100 1, individuals. This week at the Wisconsin Center, we plan to vaccinate over 3,000 individuals. And these individuals consist of um, people that fall into the 1A group who are uh, healthcare workers, as well as EMS staff. And additionally, this week, we will be vaccinating individuals who fall in our first responder group, and that includes our Milwaukee Police Department. Uh, thanks to our team at Healthy MKE, the Milwaukee Health Department has been matched with over 100 um, unaffiliated healthcare groups across the city, and we um, are happy to say that we have contacted all of our matched groups um, and have worked them into our schedules as well. So I am very excited and proud of the vaccination ramp up that has happened at the Milwaukee Health Department and the staff that are um, that are doing this work, whether it be calling individual un unaffiliated groups as well as doing the actual vaccinations. Uh, the state did re release guidance this week um, to local that local municipalities can vaccinate individuals um, at the age uh, starting at age 65 and older beginning next week, Monday. So we are um, preparing to um, accommodate that, uh, that direction. And so as part of our planning for our mass vaccination clinics um, and really to accommodate as many individuals in all of the groups that I just named, um, we are looking to move to seven days a week being available for vaccinations at the Wisconsin Center starting next week, Monday, January 25th, we would move to a um, seven day a week operation. Um, our schedules for today and tomorrow are completely full and um, the rest of the week has capacity and is filling up um, as well. So we are um, confident that by the end of the week, we will have um, over 3,000 individuals on our schedule and vaccinated. Um, you know, while we're encouraged by these numbers, um, as we begin to move into larger groups of the population um, and eventually into um, groups that are considered part of the general public, similar to the 65 and older group, um, it's important for the public to know that this vaccine is safe and it really is the key to moving us through and out of this pandemic. It gives us hope that the more individuals are vaccinated, you are protecting yourself, you are protecting the individuals around you um, and getting our numbers to as close to herd immunity as we can get, which allows us to open back up um, and to resemble some sense of normalcy. And while we know that there are many, many myths out there about the vaccine, I would ask that you really consider the alternative, knowing that a sore arm for a day or two, or maybe even not feeling well for a day is better and more preferable than getting actually COVID-19, where you are for sure um, out for quarantine for at least 10 to 14 days, where you can experience much more severe symptoms that can put you in the hospital and that can also um, spread and put others at risk as well. So then also I wanted to um, just transition and uh, stress again the importance of testing that you have heard um, already on this call, but really wanting to follow up on the recent changes that DHS has made um, regarding medical orders for the community testing sites to be able to expand testing to individuals that are one years old and older. Um, we are so excited at, um, to be able to announce that we um, are able to accommodate that age range of one year or older at all three of our community testing sites. And so know that the, the test that we do, the PCR testing is collected through um, nasal swabs and you do get those results within 24 to 48 hours. 
I um, would add though that um, parents should always be contacting their child's uh, regular medical provider uh, if they have concerns about any illness. However, know that the community testing sites are available um, for those who have either known exposures um, or individuals who have tested with those symptoms as well. And so with that, I'm happy to turn it back over to Sydney. Thank you very much. Our first question comes from Rose Schmidt at CBS 58. DHS is opening nine mobile vaccine clinics around the state today. Does the, do the city or the county have any plans for a mobile vaccine site? I can address that. So the um, Milwaukee Health Department is actually working with um, DHS to um, pilot one of their, their actual mobile sites. But in addition to that, uh, the Milwaukee Health Department is planning to have uh, mobile strike teams that will address particular populations and particular sectors. And so uh, we plan to roll that out in the, um, in the next few weeks to come. Next question comes from Patrick Palantonio at WISN 12. For anyone on the call, President-elect Biden is talking about 100 million vaccines in 100 days. What pandemic-related preparations are being made in the city and county for when he becomes president tomorrow, and how long do you expect it will take to notice any difference in the vaccine response? So from the local health department side, I can just share that, um, as I noted, we are moving to seven days a week. Um, for vaccinations and we will um, continue to do our best to get as many people vaccinated as as soon as we can. So as we get the vaccine, we're doing our best to get it into individuals. And I, th I think what you're witnessing in real time is the ramping up. If you think about the fact that it was 10 days ago, roughly, that we had 100 vaccinations, went to 300, 900, we're going to be going to thousands. Um, we are accelerating this as quickly as we can. And I was just over at the Wisconsin Center earlier today, and I could see firsthand how they've already reconfigured the, the floor layout there because of the increase in the number of people they've had. So in the coming weeks, not only as the commissioner said, are we expanding the hours to have, go to a seven day a week operation, um, we'll be looking at other sites as well. So the real question I think is how quickly can we get these vaccinations? We, we are committed to getting them out as quickly as we receive them. And so what we're doing is we're ramping up, making sure that to the extent the state receives the vaccinations from the state and we receive them from, the, the state receives them from the federal government and we receive them from the state. Um, my goal is as quickly as possible is to get these vaccinations into as many arms in this city as humanly possible. And I will echo, you know, Mayor Bear's uh, uh, comments. I mean, Milwaukee County, we don't have a healthy uh, health department. So we're in a very uh, interesting position, but we want to continue to support all of our local health departments in standing up any vaccination sites that we need assistance with. Our next question comes from Kent Wainscott at WISN 12. He's going to ask his question on camera. And this is uh, for the mayor and, and perhaps Dr. Weston as well. It's been just about a year since we first learned of COVID. We didn't know what to expect. And here we are now a year later, marking 400,000 deaths um, nationally. I guess my question is, um, what are your thoughts about where we are now a year later? And looking back, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? Well, I can tell you from my perspective, what I wish would have been done differently is, is actually at the national level, that we would have taken this seriously from the get-go. I think that what you have seen nationally is an incredibly disjointed response effort. And I think that you can see that firsthand with how different states are responding right now and where they are in, in responding to the pandemic. I think, I think that was a huge mistake. Um, here at the state level, I, I obviously wish it wouldn't have been so involved in partisan politics. I think that our ability to respond was hampered very, very much. The, the legislature still, uh, here we are since nine months and, and the county executive can speak about this much better than I can. He was in the state legislature when they took action. And, and here we are now basically 10 months into this pandemic and they haven't taken any, any action at all um, to speak of since March or April. So I wish that would have happened. At, at the local level, again, what we're trying to do uh, is fight this battle on, on four different fronts. We're trying to fight it on the, the testing front, the tracing front, front. We're trying to fight it on now the vaccination front um, and, and making sure that our businesses take it seriously, but try to have them remain 
as open as possible. So, so it has been a huge, huge, huge um, amount of work for our local health department. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful and proud to the people who work in our health department, because I don't think any of them, any of us ever foresee, foresaw something like this coming our way. And, and just to add to that, I, I think those are all uh, outstanding points. And we are in a very different place now than, than we were a year ago. And those fronts that the mayor talked about, uh, testing, tracing, managing hospital capacity, that's all just temporizing the situation. It, it's putting a Band-Aid on it. But finally, we actually have a solution, a way to move toward the end, and that's vaccination. Uh, and I think to, to the last question as well, 100 million vaccinations in 100 days, that'd be very welcome. Uh, as fast as, as we as a county and the health departments uh, get vaccine, we'll be getting them into people's arms. And, and the faster we can do that in Milwaukee County, the better. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sharon Vagenda at CBS 58 for Commissioner Jackson, Dr. Weston and Mayor Barrett. Are we experiencing ultra low testing turnout and what's the concern with this? She drove past American Family Field and saw no cars at one point last week. Will this pose a problem with monitoring the rate of spread? So I wouldn't quite say we're at ultra low testing levels. Uh, we're still right around uh, well over 4,000 tests per day. So uh, we still have a, a reasonable amount of testing, but considering that we know just this time of year, there's a lot of cold and flu symptoms going on, not to mention all the COVID. And so we certainly want to see more testing. Uh, and the reason why you certainly hit on one is to understand the community spread, understand where to situate resources um, and how to best respond to the pandemic. Uh, but the other really important one is that inf individual information to know if you're infected, to be able to prevent that spread to others, to isolate uh, and to protect the community. Another question for Mayor Barrett from Sharon Bagenda. Mayor Barrett, you mentioned some reluctance with the 1A group with vaccinations. Could you expand on this and could this cause a backlog of people wanting to get vaccinated later on, especially now that people 65 plus can get vaccinated? I wasn't referring to a reluctance. I was referring to a racial disparity in who is getting vaccinated. And it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that, that the mayor of the city of Milwaukee wants to see all of our residents be vaccinated regardless of where they live in the city, regardless of what their racial background is, I want our residents to be vaccinated. And what I'm seeing in the numbers is I am seeing, at least on the first set of numbers I saw, um, a pretty sharp racial disparity. I'm concerned about that. And, and I think some of it can be explained by the, the hiring practices, the hiring uh, procedures that go on right now, um, because you don't have as much diversity in some of the hospital systems or even to the extent in city government or county government as you do, for example, in home health agencies. And so it's not a reluctance, it's a disparity. And, and I think that we're being tested here. Again, for, for seven months, we've talked in this community and this country about addressing these racial equity concerns. And this is, this is real, this is where we're doing. We, we have to make sure that all people in our community know that they can get vaccinated when we reach their designation. Again, we're still in 1A, and that's why I'm, I'm focusing on the home health workers, because I think that you will get a, a much better bell-shaped curve in terms of who's getting vaccinated um, if we get more of our home health care workers vaccinated. I think the challenge is it's not as organized as a hospital system, or it's not as organized as county government or a city government. By its very nature, because it's individuals going into homes, um, you don't have that critical mass of organization. And that's why I think it's important that, that I talk about it. I think it's important that the media talk about it, that those individuals who are really, really on the front line in providing healthcare by going into people's homes, that they get vaccinated for themselves and for their patients. Our next question comes from Sari Lusk at the Milwaukee Business Journal. When vaccinations open to people 65 and older, who can come to the Wisconsin Center for the vaccine? Do they have to be a resident of the city or county? So right now for um, next week when the um, health De Milwaukee Health Department opens up, our goal is to vaccinate individuals 65 and older that do live in the city of Milwaukee, understanding that we know there are larger efforts going on across the county to make sure that individuals in um, all Milwaukee County are vaccinated in that group. 
The next question comes from Sophie Carson at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Numerous readers emailed upon hearing the news that people aged 65 and older will soon be eligible for the vaccine, saying that they immediately reached out to their local physicians or pharmacies for more information, but these healthcare providers said they were not at all aware of the announcement or equipped to do vaccinations yet. Why is this confusion communication breakdown happening? Is it because the state DHS isn't communicating well? I would argue that it's because the media is doing such a good job in getting the information out that what's happening is that as soon as that state committee met and as soon as the announcement was made that people 65 and over um, were gonna be eligible, it spread like wildfire. And so it reached many, many vaccinators through the media as opposed to anything else. And so I'm, I'm not gonna disparage the state for doing that. Um, I think it's just the fact that in 2021, communication occurs much, much faster uh, than it did five, 10, 15, or 20 years ago. I think the bigger question is going to be the supply, because as the state has said, there are over 700,000 people who are 65 and over in the state. However, the number of vaccinations it's receiving right now are more in the neighborhood of 70,000. So you've got 700,000 people who are going to be eligible beginning on Monday, and you're gonna have 70,000, roughly 70,000 vaccinations coming in, unless we see a dramatic increase in the supply coming into the state of Wisconsin. Our next question comes from Patrick Palantonio at WISN 12 for Dr. Weston. You mentioned the precautions people should take after vaccination. Do those precautions apply to people who have antibodies after recovering from COVID? Yeah, the question broke up a little bit uh, for me. Maybe it was just mine, but I'll just repeat it. So uh, looking at it, do the, the same precautions about uh, post-vaccine masking, distancing, does that apply to people who've had the infection? The answer is absolutely, uh, and probably even more so. When you have the natural infection from COVID, you get infected, uh, and after that, you get some sort of immunity. That immunity is far less predictable uh, than the immunity from the vaccine. Uh, and so it may be short-lived immunity, it may be long, it may be strong immunity, it may be weak immunity. Um, and so uh, certainly the same principles apply, continue to wear a mask, uh, continue to physically distance. Hopefully my internet issues have worked themselves out. <laughs> the next question um, also comes from Sarah, or it comes from Sari Lesk at the Milwaukee Business Journal. Uh, believe for Commissioner Jackson, how many doses will you have available on hand next week when it's, vaccination is open to a wider group and how can people make an appointment? So um, right now uh, we plan to um, request uh, close to 5,000. Uh, doses for next week. So our goal is again to continue to ramp up and expand. Um, and we're, of course, dependent on, on what we receive, right, based off of um, what's what's being available. So our goal is around 5,000. Um, and individuals can continue to go to the Healthy MKE website um, to get registered uh, and then get on our calendar. Another question from Sari Lesk, and it looks like this is the last one in chat. If there's any other questions, please be sure to enter them into the chat. Where can people outside the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee County get a vaccine if they are 65 and over? So there's a number of different options. Uh, one is through your health system. Uh, certainly it's worth uh, touching base with your health system. Uh, a lot of the health departments are also standing up vaccination sites. And as supply becomes more ample, hopefully in the very near future, uh, we'll be expanding that out uh, substantially as well. A couple more questions have come into chat. Next one is from Sam Kramer at Fox 6 for Mayor Barrett. What? Uh, yeah, I see the question asks what my reaction is the Common Council approving the $9.7 million. I'm very, very pleased that the Council approved the $9.7 million COPS grant. Um, this is important at a time when we're facing some very serious fiscal issues in the city of Milwaukee. Um, we've made it very, very clear that this Money is gonna be used to help our patrols in neighborhoods um, and try to reduce the violent crime that we have been besieged by in the city of Milwaukee. Um, so I'm very, very pleased that they made that decision. Um, I know that there's concerns about reforms in the police department. I share those concerns um, and we are gonna to continue to move forward for 
making sure that we have a police department that is meeting everyone's needs. But we, we do need the resources and I'm pleased the council agreed with that. Next question is from Patrick Palantonio at WISN 12 for Commissioner Jackson, Mayor Barrett and County Executive Crowley. The Packers allowed thousands of fans in the stands again, or will allow thousands of fans in the stands again this weekend. What will it take to get fans back in front of the stands for Bucks games at the Pfizer Forum and for Brewers games at American Family Field? So I'll first just say I'm so excited that the Packers won on Saturday. So uh, that's a good thing. And for them to be able to have fans is, is also a good thing. Um, as it relates to the city of Milwaukee. So we are following um, and looking closely at our um, gating criteria every week. And we anticipate um, next week being able to um, look at those um, look at our current gating criteria to update our current order, which is 4.2. Uh, we are meeting with both uh, the Pfizer form and the Bucks, as well as uh, the Brewers uh, regularly. Actually, we just had a meeting today um, with the Bucks to talk about what that looks like in the future, knowing that we are still not out of this pandemic. So I wanna be very clear that, you know, um, our, our ability and our hope to, to have fans in the stands and to move back to normal, um, activities as it relates to arts and sports really depends on our numbers. It depends on what um, our current um, percentage rates look like and where our vaccination numbers are, um, as that again impacts that. So we will look at it every week and then we'll act accordingly. And again, you know, I'll be the first one to say congratulations to the Packers, but I cannot wait to go to a Milwaukee Bucks game. But uh, just like the commissioner said, we have to pay attention to the numbers. And, and when you compare Pfizer Forum, uh, to Lambeau Field, they're, they're quite different. One is an open concept and the other one is it's still enclosed. So we have to make sure that we're being as vigilant as possible to get over this pandemic before we can go to a, a sporting event, particularly the Pfizer Forum. Our next question comes from Taryn Powell at WUWM for Commissioner Jackson. For clarification, can residents 65 and older in the city start making appointments at the Wisconsin Center now? or does that registration open on Monday? So that registration will open on Thursday. We, we post our schedules for the next week later on in the week again, based off of our supply. So they would be able to go to the Healthy MKE and register um, as an unaffiliated 65 group and, um, and then get in the schedule for next week. That appears to be the last question in chat. Last call for questions. All right, thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you back here on Thursday. Thank you very much. Thank you.